Hello guys, you are welcome to my YouTube channel, Make Them Tech. Today, we are bringing to you something very interesting, titled, How to Write For Loop and If Logic Statements Inside React JSX. What is JSX? JSX actually allows you to write XML or HTML-like syntax inside JavaScript. This is quite different from what is obtainable with uh, view template engines. In view template engines, you are allowed to write JavaScript inside HTML. I'm talking about the likes of uh, Mustache, uh, Pog, um, Anubas, EJS, and so on. GSX is actually a direct opposite of view template engines. So in GSX, you are allowed to write HTML inside a JavaScript. Uh, you will agree with me that this is uh, what uh, many JavaScript developers have always been doing. They, whenever they are manipulating a DOM, you write uh, HTML inside a JavaScript. But GSX presents a, an organized and well-structured way of uh, writing HTML inside JavaScript. JSX syntax looks like a, a, an opening tag and a closing tag with an expression. Your expression is your JavaScript code. So then you can also have it in form of a component. Uh, talking about expression, what does it mean and what is a statement? Uh, a statement is an instruction that executes a task. An expression is anything that evaluates to a value. We have examples of statements like let, const, function, expression, we have strings, we have numbers, we have booleans, we have objects, we have arrays. So you should understand that there is a great difference between statement and expression. Yes, an expression is anything that evaluates to a value. Statement and instruction that executes a task. So, if you are bringing in a statement into your JSX, you are going to be bounced. So, JSX only allows you to write your code as an expression. So, to you, for you to understand this thing very well, to my left hand side, you have statement. And to the right hand side, you have expression. So, you have let num. That is, we are declaring a variable, isn't it? Yes, the name of the variable is num, N U M. When your JavaScript engine gets to let keyword in your code, it knows that you are actually what? Declaring what? A variable. And that is a statement. Declaration of variable, function definition, and so on are statements. 5 plus 2, 5 is a number, 2 is a number plus sign is an arithmetic operator. The three things here are going to what? Evaluate to seven, and that's a value. What we do to get an array using map, you bring in your data and array, and then it's going to return another array to you, a, a manipulated array. A map method is an higher order function that accepts a function as a data, or as a value, or as an argument. So, you should understand here that when we pass in a function here, it returns another array. So, because this code here evaluates to a value, it means it's an expression. So, it's not actually a statement. So, it's an expression. Your map method manipulates an array and it accepts a lambda and it returns an array, a manipulated array. And that is what gives you your your gss code or let me say your result in gsx the second aspect which is conditioning is what we have here we are using a ternary operator the anything after the question mark is what is going to be picked when it evaluates to true and if it is false it's going to pick what is after the colon we have a the the second one is the short circuit conditioning you know, when you have force, it means that nothing is going to be evaluated. It's, going, it's not going to give any results. But when it is true, it's going to be evaluated. And that's the result that you're going to have. That is anything that is after the and 
uh, operator. Uh, this is what we have been doing um, from time to time in our GSS code. The question is, does it mean that we cannot use for loop if statement in our code? Since we are passing a function here, yeah, can't we just look for a way of passing a function and passing our for loop and our if statement inside? But the question is, if you define or you declare a function, how do you invoke it? How do you call it? You can't call a function inside JXX. You are going to be bounced. JSS will bounce you. So what do we need to do? How can we execute a function on the fly so that we can have this done? The answer is what immediately invoked function expression does for us today. That is IIFE. This is a very powerful concept in JavaScript. Uh, I don't think it's that common with other languages. I'm yet to know. Uh, I don't know if there is any language that does IIFE today. But in JavaScript, we have this advantage. We can actually declare a function or you define a function and also invoke it and also invoke it immediately. So that is what IIFE does for us today. So uh, this is the syntax. You can see it is like you have two brackets. The first one is like you have two brackets and then you put a function inside. So the second bracket, the second bracket, if you are seeing it, this second bracket is more like, let's say you are passing a function to a variable. So, and then when you now call the variable, you'll be calling the variable with a bracket like what we have here. That is to say that you are calling what? A variable as a function. And that is also what is happening here. Then this is also another kind of syntax for IIFE. Is also like one bracket. And then when you now write your function, you have a, a bracket, open and closing bracket in front. So it's still the same concept. If you are anything today, whenever you have a, 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 a method, you always have it together with a bracket, open bracket, uh, uh, the opening bracket and the closing bracket. So that is a function or a method today. So we have this provision in JavaScript and that solves our problem. We can easily pass a loop statement or a logic statement inside a function and run it in our JSX. So let's practicalize all that has been said. And let's see the result. Yes, we. This is a code that is running already. Uh, what we are doing here is we are fetching uh, data from an endpoint. Uh, let me show you. That's the uh, action creators. Uh, we have um, this endpoint here. So we are making a call to this. So this is. Uh, our function we've exported it this is a f this is an action dispatcher um, in our code here so on component did mount we make it to this guy and then we get the data and we use it here so this is map iterating manipulating our array iterating over our array our the content for our array and then we are passing it this way into our JSX and it comes out like this. We now want to use for loop to watch this. is an error okay let's use this uh, fragment uh, okay so let's push this inside so our i i f e now so our expression yes in gxx you use a quality bracket open and close uh, quality bracket to uh, you, you, you write it this way and then you put your expression inside so we want to write uh, our function as an expression that is function uh, IIFE that is uh, immediately inv invoked function expression and then please there is something I didn't talk I didn't say about uh, IIFE it's not actually a lambda yeah 
we are not passing a function as a data yeah no or as a value no we are declaring it and at the same time what executing it and that gives you an expression yes and as a, that's why when you are invoking a function today is an expression because that function is going to evaluate to what to a value yes your, your function returns something so in my code now if i have a function i can call it here and it's going to work that's why you do your this dot then the name of your function and it's going to work because it's going to evaluate a value yes but a situation whereby you are writing your function you want to call it a you're going to have a problem because it doesn't allow you to write that but here uh, iife allows you to write your function as an expression meaning you declare it and you call it at the same time you invoke it at the same time so the syntax let's say i love this kind of uh, syntax this is two brackets then i will now put my function inside so let me use our function and then let's use our loop for that is let i be equal to zero i less than the name of our data length then i plus plus so let's use what we have here directly because it's a function that has to return a value yes but it needs to return a value let's go there we have one only just one what would be the problem the problem is that return statement <laughs> will run once yeah or oh, let me say it's not that's not even how I'm, I'm supposed to put it the return statement when you when your code eats a statement the execution of that code terminates at that point so that's what is happening this is a loop uh, statement and this is the loop block so and we are returning directly inside this loop block so it means that when your code gets here it will to return this thing and that's the end so we need to look for a way of passing this data into a variable and then return everything as a whole so let's do that let's post be equal to now i want to i want you to check out something you know ordinarily we'll do it like this by saying post then we put our distance so that it will continue to put it inside yes if you do it like this and then you now come here to return your post we are going to have objects because this itself is an object it's never a string you know in our manipulating dom the way we write we will we, we, we bring them we will concatenate them together we'll just be using our plus sign and then we'll now release everything at the end but this will not give us the result that we want see it here can you see so we have to pass a, a an array into this variable then we'll now push all these objects into our array and then we'll now return it just like what map is doing map is also returning an array today so and gsx is an object so it undoes it from that point and gives us the expected results so let's check it out that's it now let's go to condition name let's we want to condition our uh what we do okay let's say um let's say uh we have something let's just just from something this is uh let's say we have something like this so let's say when the data is more than uh, 20 let's say good So when the data is more than 20 we say good so what do we have here so this is good so if it's less than 20 then this is bad so let's condition this now okay so i would like to use this kind of function here And then we bring in our if statement that is x post dot length less than 20. 
when it is less than 20 it should be bad uh, where is that okay so yes we we'll return h1 and that is bad else we we'll return good this is just an example so now let's look at our code here you can see good the data is more than 20 now let's reduce it and slice it i'm already using slice here so let's slice it to something like let's say 15 that is less than 20. Let's see the result bad so this is without ternary operator without short circuit conditioning and just used our normal if statement here and we have the results so this is the power of immediately invoke function expression being displayed here so you can always choose what you want to use though the normal approach which is even shorter is to use map so but if you have any reason to use if statement or for loop you should know how to use it and that is why this tutorial is coming your way to explain to you how to go about that so we have come to the end of the tutorial please subscribe to my youtube channel make them tech thank you for watching